can you smell that? The lovely smell of uh, the, well, where I am right now, obviously. Who knows where I am? I think some people in chat might know where I'm, where I'm uh, broadcasting from. Ah, it's a beautiful day. Hold on, let me turn up, turn up the sun a little bit. I mean, uh, <laughs> so get in the, there we go. Um, yes, welcome everyone. I always start a few extra minutes. That boat looks straight out of Miami Vice. <laughs> uh, yes, it is, uh, I am at the beautiful, beautiful Han River. Han River, which in Korean is Han, and then river is Kang. So Han Kang, literally Han River. Don't say Han Gang River or else you're saying Han River River. I've heard a lot of people say that. Um, I've said that too jokingly, but I hear a lot of people use it. So don't do that, but it's just called the Han Gang and uh, it's in Seoul. It's really easy to get to. It's really big. There's a lot of different places that you can technically see the Han Gang from. So there's, from this place I am, which is actually, uh, I believe this is Yoido. I think this is Yoido. Yeah, there's a lot of different places, parts of Seoul that you can see the Han River from. And uh, this is the place that I typically go to around on this angle. But uh, some people like seeing it from the other angle. It doesn't really matter. It's really big. You can go there. You could uh, have a picnic there. You'll see lots of people with tents that are just kind of hanging around and they're not spending the night there. They're just kind of relaxing during the day, taking a nap. You can even order food there. I did, uh, I do chicken delivery there sometimes. So you go down there and you call a chicken delivery place and they're technically not allowed to legally, but they do it anyway. You just tell them where you are and they'll have a, a driver guy kind of walk down and bring it to you. <laughs> Some of them do that, though it's not legal. They're supposed to have you meet, at the, meet them at the curb. So uh, yeah, you can get chicken there and snacks and you can just eat food and relax right by the river and it's uh, pretty nice, clean air. In good weather, it's a really fun place ha for having a picnic. Why are you inside the river? No, I'm not, I'm not inside the river. You can see right down here, right down here is the, um, that's the coastline, I'm right on the coast. So my, uh, my feet are a little bit wet, like I'm, I'm kind of stepping on the rocks right now, but um, yeah. Okay. Yes, in the rocks, in the mud. That's right. So today we've got a lesson about how to use tenika and tende. But before we get started, as usual, I'm going to give you a list of prerequisites. So today's lesson, first of all, if you're not intermediate, if you're, if you're still a beginner, you do not need to learn this form. These, these two forms we're going to be doing today. Tenika and tende. If you are not intermediate, you do not even need these forms because there will be no way you would be able to use these forms and there would be no way you'd be able to understand the sentences that they're used in unless you already have all of the beginning material down. So that includes everything in the beginning level. So this is definitely an intermediate lesson for today. But specifically, the prerequisites are, so you're thinking, eh, Billy, don't tell me what to do. I'm gonna, you know, YOLO, I'm doing what I want. Just tell me what I need to know. Okay, you really need to know how to use the Nika form, which we learned in a previous live stream, as well as the Te form. We learned both of these in live streams already. Um, Nika meaning because, and Te meaning the connector. And I'll do a quick review of these today, like a really brief review of them because these forms that we're gonna be learning today are part of these. They are a combination of another form with these and they work in the exact same way, mostly for the most part. So if you do not know these forms, skip today's lesson. If you already know these forms and you feel good, maybe you're a beginner, but you're like, you know what? I'm an advanced beginner, Billy. I'm advanced for a beginner. Then don't let me tell you what to do. So that's the prerequisites for today's lesson. Um, let me just see if my moderators are here. Zilly, hey, Rowan Z's, hey. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, a Himang said, wanted me to let you guys know she couldn't make it today, but she says, happy birthday, J Hope. Okay. <laughs> oh, Nightbot. Yeah, Nightbot should work fine. 
Okay, so we're going to be learning about these two forms today, the tenika and tende, just like I wrote up on the board. But in order to learn these forms, we first need to really understand their original forms, well, what they are a combination of. So in order to do that, we're, have to, we're gonna have to relearn, kind of, nika and the te form. So let's do a quick review of these forms. If you already remember them very well, great, that's, that's the best. But if you kind of are a little bit fuzzy on them, then let's do a quick review. Nika is a ending, it goes on to a verb stem, and it means because. And it's a very simple way you can use because in pretty much any sentence. Now, I should point out Nika is not formal. So if you're speaking with someone in a formal situation and you need to say because, this is not the one you want to use. And if you want to know a different one you can use, check out the live stream where I teach about this form because I give some other options you can use. So this is not formal, but it's a very common way. It's not, it's not impolite, but it's not formal, but it's a very common way to say because in a sentence. You can say because I like it or because I am busy. Papu da, to be busy. So papu, you get the verb stem and this attaches directly to the verb stem. It's either nika after a vowel or unika after a consonant. So papu da, to be busy would become papu nika because I'm busy, and mokta to eat would become mokunika because I eat, just like that. There are a few things that you cannot use this form with, however. You cannot use it with emotions like happy or sad or sorry, some sort of emotion like this, happy, sad, sorry, all those. Um, so what you cannot say is, you cannot say, I'm happy because, I'll put no here, no, I'm, hap I'm sorry because I am late, I'm sad because I am late. You cannot use this grammar form to say because for that. In order to say because for those, you'll have to use a different grammar form, which I also cover in the same video where I cover these. And there is an abridged version, so it's only like, I think 15 minutes or something. You don't have to watch the whole two hour live stream, you can just quickly review these really quick if you want. So that's the only exception is you cannot use this for making emotions. So that's all there is to saying because. You can make any sort of sentence like because I'm busy today, uh, we can't meet. Or because I ate the cookies, we have to buy more. Anything like that is fine with this because form. And this is the most common way to say because with this exception. So te, however, is um, a, it's not quite easy to translate literally in English. You could translate it as and, but you could also translate it as but. This can mean both and or but. So how? Why, what it actually does is this particle doesn't actually mean and or but because these are quite different in English. You can say I like him and uh, I want to meet him or I like him but I don't want to meet him and they're completely different. No, this form actually serves the purpose of adding contrast to a sentence. So you have two sentences and one of them is this in one hand and the other one is this in the other hand. Are those sentences connected with and or but? It doesn't matter. All that matters is that these two sentences I'm saying are connected in some way. And that's what this te form does. It connects two sentences and shows contrast between those. So for example, you can say, well, today I'm busy, but papun day, papun day, but we can meet. Or today I'm busy and I have lots to do. You can make any sort of connected sentence that just shows contrast between them. So whenever you're using this form, a good example I like to give is pretend that each sentence is on each of your hands. And it's like when you present these sentences which have te in them, it's like you're presenting two sentences, one on each hand, and you're saying, hey, look this and this. So it could be but, look this, but this, depending on the context, or it could be this and this. Today I'm busy, but I can't meet you. Or today I'm busy and something else. Um, we don't have time today, but, or um, I'm hungry and I wanna order a pizza. It could just be the sort of contrast. Often it will end up meaning but, but it doesn't always have to be. Oh, I just got a donation. Let me see, who's that? 
Oh, Ibrahim. 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 Thanks for the uh, one pound donation. So I will give you one dab. Thank you, Ibrahim. And so, yes, you can use either and or but depending on how you're translating, it doesn't really matter. But the function of this is not just to show contrast. So that's, that's how it's used. But the, the reason people use this isn't just to show contrast, it's actually to make a sentence a bit softer. Specifically, when you're using this form at the end of a sentence, it makes that sentence a little bit softer. Like maybe your friend says, hey, can you meet today? And you normally would reply, oh, I don't have any time today in, in English, right? But in Korean, if you were to say, oh, 오늘 시간 없어요, I don't have any time. It's kind of like just saying, hey, I don't have any time. It's just straight. So in Korean, if you want to add that sort of soft feeling that you can give to a sentence in English, you have to actually change the grammar you're using. And this 는 te or this te ending adds that sort of soft feeling, like maybe you're sorry to say it, or at least the sentence is a bit softer sounding. It's not... I don't have time today. It's instead, 시간이, 시간이 없는데요. Like, well, the thing is, here, one hand, oh, I don't have any time. And it lets the listener assume what the next hand would say. So, oh, 오늘 시간이 없는데요. Like, oh, I don't have any time today and I can't meet you or, but I want to meet you. You know, it could be any of those things and it lets the listener assume something else is there. But this presents one of those hands it presents one of those sentences to the listener and by that it softens the sentence it says hey well i'm gonna say something else i'm probably not gonna say it but like well here's one thing like what do you want me to do with that like ah, i'm sorry i don't have any time today or i really want to go but it could be any sort of use like that so this makes the sentence softer and it's also often used for when you're explaining something for the same reason that it makes something softer. So if you want to say, um, well, hey, I saw my friend today. Like, hey, I saw my friend. Look, I'm bringing up one hand. There's going to be another hand. I'm going to show you something else. I haven't yet. So it's useful for kind of introducing a new subject. So by that, it's used often for explaining something to somebody. So like a good translation you can think for it at is as so. So if you see a sentence that ends with the te form, it could kind of have a meaning like, well, so you see, you see, I just don't have any time today. Oh, oh, you see, I don't have any time today. Or so I saw my friend today. Or you see, I like teaching Korean or whatever you want to do. It's useful for kind of bringing something up to start an explanation. Because by doing that, the listener hears that form and they know what, what are you going to contrast it with? Like, what's coming next? So it's a good way to quickly bring something up and let the listener kind of fill in the blank with what they're thinking. And it usually will work fine. And in context, it will be a very natural, soft way to show contrast between two sentences. So this was your rapid review of Nika and Te forms. Any questions? I will erase these while I look at the chat for a moment. And then we'll go right into today's forms. Oh yeah, there's some people here who actually have the six month badge. I'm not sure if they're talking. Let's see. Yeah, class just started. We, we see, you see, we can't see the UC. Oh, I'm, I apologize. I, I'm not sure exactly how far down. It might have, must have been down here that I was writing it. Yeah, uh, it said so, and below that, you see. That's it. There wasn't any other writing. Is it normal that I had to manually update my YouTube membership? No, I think that YouTube does that. Some people have to manually update it um, because I, I was actually trying to go for 100 members this year, but it keeps dropping. So like I hit 39 and then it dropped down to 33 at the beginning of the month. So I think it automatically like doesn't renew people's memberships. Yeah, it must depend on the payment method. Okay, the board needs to be moved back. Sure, I can do that. Let's move the board just a little bit back. There we go. Not too much, because then the board will get really small. So let's just move it a little bit back. Okay. 
There we go. So, yes, if you understand the forms Nika and Pe very well, like you get how to use it, you kind of get what the feeling is, then these new forms we're going to learn today will make a lot more sense because the way that they work grammatically is the exact, exact same way as those two forms. Okay, so let's go right into our first form. We're going to start by learning about tenika. Tenika. And I'll also talk about like where this form came from and other stuff like that toward the end. So if you're more curious about like in-depth information, we'll go into that after the lesson today. So tenika, how to use it? Well, you take a verb stem. This can be any verb you want. And if it ends in a consonant, you'll attach uh, and if it ends in a vowel, you'll simply attach the letter, li, this letter right here. Then you'll attach tenika to the end. Teka. <laughs> then, you know, you'll attach this thing. So that's all there is to doing, that's all there is to conjugating this form. There's nothing complicated about using this form at all, as far as conjugating goes. Um, what it actually is, is a combination of the ending Te, which we'll talk about later, te and nika, because. So you could imagine that this form is used as a form of saying because, and you'd be correct. This form also means because. The usage is a bit different, but the situations in where you would use because, like I don't have time because I am busy today, or, you know, I didn't, I won't do my homework because I don't want to. Those types of situations, that, that type of grammar, that type of sentence order will be the same as using nika because it comes from that form. But the general meaning of the form is completely different. And I think that's what trips people up when they see this form for the first time is that they learn this thinking it's going to be a very, very different form when it's only a little different than using nika. Its usage is only a little bit different, but the overall usage, this means because, is the exact same as nika. So that's the reason why. So this means because. And if you want to jump ahead and guess, the tende form is also the exact same, well, originally as the te form for tende. It's just te plus the te ending. So if you get that, you're going to be ahead. So the, what it's used for now that makes it different than just the Nika form by itself is that this form is used for making an assumption. And we'll talk about this in detail. So by that, you can think of it as I assume or I think that I think so. Like if you were to say, well, I mean, I guess, I assume, I'm pretty sure, I think, just think about it as I assume, then that's the meaning that you get when you use this grammar form in a sentence. So specifically, before we get into some examples, I want to let you know that this form can not only be used in the present tense as it would be here. So verb stem plus these and then tenika. This can also be used with past tense verb stems. So I just want you to be aware of that ahead of time. Oh, I got another donation. Oh, Grandpa Mikey. Hey, Grandpa Mikey. Awesome, with the $5 donation. Grandpa Mikey. Five, awesome. Should I do five dabs for that? Should I do one dab per dollar? <laughs> that, that might get a bit ridiculous. Okay, let's do, I'll just do a $5 dab. <laughs> Oh, that was, that was too strong. Thanks, Grandpa Mikey. Awesome. Five dabs, yeah, that'd be a lot. Because then I wonder how would I convert, like when people do in other currencies, like someone does their like Armenia, Armenia, not Armenia, um, Argentina pesos, and then it's like 500 tiny dabs for Armenia. I mean, why do I keep saying Armenia, Argentina? <laughs> Okay, so this is used for making assumptions and you can use it with not only the present tense like this, but also the past tense. And I'm going to show you how that works before I just give you some examples. So I think this is important because a lot of times when this form is used, it can also be used in the past tense. You need to be, you need to know how to do both of those. And the past tense will end with 
This normally would be the ending of a past tense form. So you'd have like, hada would become hesoyo, right? Hesoyo, like that. That's the normal past tense. But with here, you need the past tense verb stem. You take the past tense verb stem, which will always end with these two. And you can cut off everything after it. So now you have the past tense verb stem. So for kada to go, you would have kasoyo normally. So you just cut it off right here, right when you see these double letters right here at the end of it. Um, that's the past tense verb stem. So on the past tense verb stem, then you attach the rest. Well, yeah, kasir. So then you attach er and then tenika. So you can take it, you can use this form with the past tense verb stem or with a present tense verb stem. You couldn't use it with a future tense verb stem though. Um, that would just be the regular. This is future tense when you use it with the present tense verb stem already. So it's either this regular one, you can say kada for kar tenika for regular future tense, or kasu tenika with the past tense verb stem. So you will see both of these conjugations used in sentences, and I'll talk about how that's a bit different, but you can use both of these, so you should be aware that it could appear in either one. So it's either gonna be this with past tense with these two letters, or it'll just be regular like that. Let's see, let's do some examples then. Oh, and then just like using te, just like using the te form, you might see this at the end of a sentence, or you might see it in the middle of a sentence to connect two sentences together. So just like te, it has the exact same usage. You can use it at the very end of a sentence to kind of soften it up and to show that there might be something else, or you can use it in the middle of a sentence to compare and contrast two different sentences. So, Let's give you some examples, because really this form is best learned through examples. And I could understand this form, how people were using it, way long before I actually knew what it is or how to use it by myself. Because you learn really well through learning examples, how seeing how people actually use it. Just knowing the grammar for how to make it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to use it naturally yourself because there are certain situations when Koreans prefer to use this form and other situations where it's less natural. And we'll talk about those in today's lesson too. Let me just check the, check the chat for a second. Yeah, there's gonna be lots of examples today. Billy, people are trying to fight? What? <laughs> is, someone, is someone trying to fight? <laughs> about what? <laughs> We're learning Korean. Okay. Um, so let's do it. Let's do a basic example. So, mani chur tenika. Oops, not chur. Oh, and the conjugation for this is exactly like with nika. So normally for chukta would be to cold. Chukta would normally mean to be to cold, but when you're using it with Nika, as I taught during that live stream, it would become chuu nika. So for this form, you actually need to do that as well. So you take chuu tenika. And this is only with those irregular, well, I shouldn't say irregular. It's only with those descriptive verbs that end with this letter p up. Um, but yeah, the same conjugation rules apply to this as well, as they will apply to many grammar forms. So mani chu tenika, um, because it will be very cold. We'll talk about exactly what this means because it will be very cold. Well, let me quickly write the rest of the sentence. Um, let's do that. Okay, before I say what this means, let me check the, I just got a donation. Oh, wow, nice. I didn't even know what it was for. None your business. None your business. None your business. A long name. Oh wow, $10 donation. That's huge. Hey Billy, I've been studying Korean for around four months now and love your videos. Thank you for making videos that help make learning Korean fun and simple. Oh, thank you. And none your business. I think I've seen you here a couple months ago already. So yeah, you really must have just started. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't expect it. Big money, big prizes. 
I love it. All right, I gotta do a big, big dab for the $10 donation. <sighs> gotta channel my, uh, the old karate moves I learned when I was in college. <laughs> Thanks, none your business. Okay, so we've got our first sentence here. Mani meaning a lot. So chupta meaning to be cold. Let's just talk about the literal meaning before we talk about exactly what this te does to the sentence. So chur tenika. Now it, I said it's a future form. So chur tenika because it will be cold. Chushimaseyo, meaning to be careful. Careful be or careful do. So be careful because it's very cold. So literally, before we talk about te, it is very cold because, so because it is very cold, be careful, right? You can understand that. And I would understand the sentence even if I didn't know this te nika grammar because I know nika grammar. And it's the same overall idea. Because it will be very cold, be careful. Now what te adds, I got another donation. Let me quickly do this so I can, don't lose my train of thought. What this te adds now is an assumption. So we've got the assumption that it will be very cold, so be careful. And we'll talk, so think about that for a moment. Let that kind of sink in for a bit, and then I'll talk about why that's important. I just got another donation. Oh, wow. What are you trying to like, is everyone like trying to like one up the previous donator? We had like a $5 donation, and then we got a $10 donation, and now we're getting a 20, 20 euro donation. <laughs> Carol Lindner, I don't, I'm not sure if I've seen your name before. Have you been watching a lot? Lintner. Carol Lintner. Hey, you gotta write a message. I gotta know who you are. With the 20. Dang. Yeah, I think everyone was like trying to one up the other person. Oh, I wish that, uh, yeah, in before. <laughs> oh yeah, Carol Lintner. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta know who you are. You gotta write something, Carol, so I can appropriately respond. It's not an auction. <laughs> uh, yeah, Abby, I think it'll be very cold, cold tomorrow. Be careful. That's correct. Before the two billion. Yeah, that's right. Starts up as one penny, then two pennies. And, you know, a few hours later, I've got the whole, uh, the gross national <laughs> revenues of a small country. <laughs> yeah, but thank you. I, I got to do a big, a big dab for that, Carol. Okay. <sighs> But thank you, awesome. And if you write a if you write a donation uh, letter, I'll read that as well. All right, I don't have twenty dollars, but tabu tab haji margo whip. W h i p. Ioni Ioni mode. Ioni mode. Thank you. Appreciate it. Two dollar donation. Oh, but you say you don't want you don't want to dab though. You don't want to dab. Are you sure? You don't want to dab. You do want a whip. I don't know what that means. <laughs> what is a whip? Do you want a whip? Okay, I'm not sure if that's what you're asking for, but that's what you get. Oh, and a new member. Oh, Kevin Fu. Yes, I definitely will contrast this. I didn't expect to get a bunch of donations at the start, but fortunately, fortunately, everyone, if you're worried, like, Billy, get on with the lesson. Today's lesson all fits on one page and some notes I have on the back. So we'll be okay for today, as far as time. New, new member, welcome Conan. Awesome. Conan. Like uh, Conan the Detective, or Conan O'Brien, or Conan the Barbarian. Whip and nay nay Billy, <laughs> please. You cannot pay me enough money to do that. <laughs> Thank you, but welcome as well to Conan. <laughs> welcome Conan. Okay. No, you're not gonna watch me nip or whip or nay nay. Okay, so. Literally, we can just get this meaning about it. Very cold, because it will be very cold, because it's very cold, be careful. And if you just understood it like that, like if you're not sure how to use this form yourself, at least if you understand it like this, you'll be okay for the most part, you'll get it. You'll understand this meaning of the sentence because you understand nika means because, and you would be okay. But using it yourself, however, is where you need to actually understand that this form adds the meaning of an assumption, as in I said before, I assume. 
Specifically, future tense. Now, future tense doesn't necessarily mean it will be cold, but let's just say it does. So, I assume it will be because tenika is used with this. Now, this, whenever you see this letter used before form or this, it means future tense every single time. Whether the actual literal meaning of the sentence, well, whether the natural translation for the sentence is in future or not, the literal meaning of this letter or this syllable plus another form is always, always the future tense. If you see other forms that use this, it actually is the future tense, which is just a cool little thing. So, literally, I assume that, I assume that, or even, if this makes it easier, I think that. But I not just I think, I think it will be cold. No, I'm pretty sure, I'm assuming, I am so sure that I'm gonna assume it. And you know what they say, you have to be careful when you make an assumption. So this is like, you really are assuming it. Like, I assume that, I think, I'm pretty sure. You're pretty sure that it's going to be very cold, so be careful. So it's not just be careful because it will be cold. No, you can say that without this form. You can just say, be careful because it will be cold with the regular future tense, you know? Koshida, koeyo, hal koeyo, right? Hal ko plus nika. Regular future tense plus nika. You can say, wani churko nika, because it will be very cold, be careful. But this sentence sounds bland. You're saying, be careful because it will be very cold. Like, be careful because it will be very cold. I don't know, it just sounds a bit bland in English, I think, to me. But Tenika is when you're assuming. So I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty cold. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be cold, so be careful, right? Notice how natural this sentence sounds compared to be careful because it will be very cold. It's just like grammatically both of them are good, but one of them sounds much more natural and I think better. Um, be careful, I think it's gonna be really cold, so be careful, which sounds completely natural. And that's what this tenika te form is used for. So it's future tense and it's for showing an assumption, like your assumption about something. I assume, or like I said, if it helps make it easier to think about this form, try to think of it as meaning the think form. You remember the uh, kata form? You should, if you're intermediate, you should know this form. If not, I have a live stream about it and uh, there will also be a abridged version of that as well. So kata means to think, like I think or I'm thinking something, right? So this form meaning is kind of similar to this form. I think, it's not the exact same meaning, but let's just kind of think of it that way. So I think, I think it will be very cold. So because I think it will be very cold, be careful. That's kind of the grammar. That's kind of the feeling that you're giving to the sentence by adding tenika. It doesn't mean I think it will be cold. It just means, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I assume it's going to be cold. Yeah, I'm, that's what I know. I'm going by this assumption that it's going to be cold. My assumption right now is that it will be cold. So literally just, it will be cold because it will be very cold is literally what it means. But that context, that kind of meaning, that feeling that this form gives is I'm thinking it, but I'm pretty sure. In fact, I'm not just thinking it. Like, I don't think it will be cold. I'm just assuming it. Of course, it's going to be cold. So that's the difference that this form gives you. But if it helps, you can kind of think of it as similar to using this form. Like, I think it will be very cold. So, like I said, in order to learn this form, we need examples. And I have come prepared with lots of examples and we have time. So let's do our next sentence because I wanna do a bunch of sentences and I've, I can go all the way until three o'clock just doing sentences about tenika, which is great. And I have, one, two, three, four, five, six more I want to do. They're all a little bit different. So, let's do the next one. Tega hai tenika. Tega hai tenika. Kokjong haji maseyo. Haji maseyo. Okay, so first of all, 걱정하다 is to worry. And 지 마세요 is just don't. It's a polite way to say don't do something after a verb. So 걱정 is the verb to worry. 하지 마세요, don't worry. 제가 I, 
Hai comes from hada to do. Oops, not do. It's not a song. Tenika, because. Because I will do it. This it would only be in the English translation. It doesn't exist in the Korean translation. Because I will do. Don't worry. Don't worry, I'll do it. Don't worry, because I'll do it. I'm going to do it, so don't worry. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. That exact type of feeling is what this form gives. Now, we can go back. So if you want, we can change this to the regular future tense. And then let's contrast that. So, 제가 할 거니까, just because I will do it, don't worry. Because I will do it, don't worry. That's the meaning that you get if you change this back to the regular future tense. So it's not used. Because I will do it, don't worry. Like, yeah, they'll understand what you mean. It makes sense. It just sounds very awkward. No. 제가 할 테니까, I'm going to do it. Hey, I'm pretty sure, I'm assuming I'm going to do that. So don't worry. Because I'm doing that. So the, that's one thing that I wanted to show you about using the tenika form is that when you want to say because and then a future tense, this will be very natural wherever you can use it because it's more commonly used for these, these sort of situations. And one common thing that you'll see this form used together with is the concept of worrying or saying that something will be okay. Whenever you present this, because of this, you're kind of leaving the other half of your sentence empty until you say it. So if you if you were to just say, 제가 할 테니까, 제가 할, 테니, 할 테니까, this literally all by itself would mean, because I'll do it. 제가 할 테니까, 제가 할 테니까요. Because I'm going to do it, Koreans will assume if they hear just this. So you didn't say this. You just say this. Koreans will assume the next part of your sentence is going to be, it's okay. Don't worry. You can do that. I'll take care of it. You know, anything like that, like don't worry about it. It's okay. Koreans will assume that without you even having to say it. So oftentimes Koreans will end their sentences with this tenika form after saying like something, something will happen. So, and then they'll just, they'll just end the sentence. I'm going to, I'm going to do it because I'm going to do it. Don't worry. For example, what if your friend's like, oh, I have so much homework and uh, no one's going to help me and I can't go to the store tomorrow and my life is ruined. Oh, actually, if you're talking to your friend, you probably wouldn't use take off. So I'll just switch that. Nega. 아, 내가 도와줄 테니까. I'm going to help you so. 걱정 마요. 걱정 마세요. 거, 걱정하지 마세요. Whatever you want to say. 괜찮아요. 시간 있어요. Whatever you want to say. Because I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you so. This often has a natural translation in English as blah, 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 blah. So, like I will or someone will do something. Therefore, so, something, something, something. So if you were to say, hey, like, I'll do it, I'll do it, so don't worry. It's that meaning of I will do it and something's coming after. Therefore, something's coming after. And whether you were to say that or not, as the second part of your sentence, Koreans know to assume that. Because it's saying, because I'm going to be doing this. Because this is going to happen, assume, I'm assuming this. The listener might also assume or can usually assume what would come next in the sentence. So I just want to make that clear that this doesn't necessarily have to be used um, with a full sentence. That you might sometimes see this as a partial sentence because it can easily be assumed when you're using this form that what follows after it is something like don't worry or it's okay or you know you can do that or anything that's kind of like reassuring. So you can kind of think of this form as useful for kind of like reassuring someone, telling someone that it'll be okay or someone will do something. This isn't, this reassuring meaning is not in the form at all. This, so don't write down that tenika means like reassuring therefore or anything like that. It's just how it typically can be used because of the feeling that it creates because of that natural 
feeling that using tenika for future tense kind of creates. Like, well, I'm assuming I'm going to do it. So, you know, hey, well, I, you know, I guess I'm just going to do it. You know, no one else is going to do it. Take a hard tenika. Like, I'll do it, I guess, you know. I'm assuming I'll just do it. So it kind of reassures them like, hey, you know, this is going to happen. I'm assuming that. I'm pretty sure. I think that this is going to happen. So, therefore, whatever, uh, whatever else the rest of the sentence will be. But we're not done. Let's do some many more examples. Um, okay, let's say that, let's just check the chat for a moment. Everyone doing okay? Is the, uh, is the, fight, is the fight resolved? Who won? Tenika attached with no spaces? No, there is a space, Lin. After the, uh, the ending with the letter, the li or the e, there is a space and then tenika. Same with tende. Let's see. Katsi har tenika, kokjong maaseyo. Yeah, that's fine. Kenchan har tenika. Yeah, that's fine. Har konika. Yeah, har konika is just re is plain future. Kevin Fu. It's completely plain future. And often it won't sound as natural if you wanted to say, don't worry about it. Like, I'm going to do it, so don't worry about it. You want to kind of say like, well, you know, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm just assuming it. I'm assuming, I think I'm going to do it is what it means. But because it kind of means I assume, there are places where you cannot use it. So we'll talk about those in a bit. But first of all, let's do the next sentence. I think as you see it used more, you'll kind of get the meaning as well yourself. Kimbap mashi. Let's see. Pistada. Pistar tenika. Kuji. Oops. Kuji. I guess I'll say that store instead. Yeah, it's probably better. Ke shikdankaji. Uh, let's do, yeah, let's just do that. Gaji. Angado de. Angado teo. Hopefully you can read my writing. Okay. Okay, so this is a long sentence, but I thought let's give you guys a long, natural, normal Korean sentence using this form that you might see. So, kimbap. First of all, it's just kimbap. So, let's use my black marker. Mat means flavor. Kimbap is just kimbap. Pistada means to be similar. So we have the tenika. So I assume. So I assume because I assume that the kimbap flavor will be similar. Guji, uh, I'm not going to go into in depth about this, but it just means really with used with often with negative sentences. Like, do we really have to or do you? Is that really necessary? Kind of like that. So really, I'll do it like that. Ke that shikdang restaurant gaji to as far as so up to their anghado teo okay to not go k to k to not go so it's okay to not go to that restaurant ke shikdang gaji to that restaurant because I assume the kimbap flavor will be similar. So what this would be like, it's like saying like, hey, I think the kimbap's flavor, like wherever you go, the kimbap, the flavor of the kimbap, or in more natural English, we might just say, it's going to taste the same. So the kimbap is all going to taste the same. So because I assume that, because I assume that no matter where you go, the kimbap's going to taste the same, we don't really need to go to that restaurant. So maybe your friend says, hey, we should, I know this really great kimbap restaurant up in Seoul and uh, they make pretty good kimbap. So let's take, a, let's get on the train and go 50 miles up to there. And you would tell your friend, uh, kimbap mashi pisetal tenika, kuji ke shikdangkaji an kado teo. Or I don't think we need to go there. Or whatever else you want to say. This is just a basic kind of example of a longer sentence. So because tenika, nika, because I assume it will be similar. What will be similar? The flavor of the kimbap, or more naturally, the kimbap will taste the same. So I, because I assume that the kimbap will taste the same, then you can think of the rest of the sentence. But I'm not going to go into the grammar for the rest so much. It's not as important. So, 굳이 그 식당까지 
do we really, I don't really think we have to go all the way to that restaurant because I'm assuming that the kimbap is going to taste the same, right? Kimbap, if you've had it before, if you have like $1 kimbap or $5 kimbap, the $5 one tastes better, yeah, but it's all kimbap. Like, you're not going to eat the $1 and say like, Bleh, this is $1 kimbap. Oh yes, this is $5 kimbap. It's just, oh, this is $5 ingredients inside the kimbap, like different ingredients that are more expensive. And this is cheaper ingredients in the $1 kimbap. It's just kind of like that. Like, it's not like $1 sushi or $10 sushi where the $10 sushi is clearly better. Uh, so it's just kind of that thing like, hey, you know, it's all gonna, I, I'm guessing it's all just gonna taste the same. So we don't really have to go there. So now you get a really natural sentence. You're not just saying the kimbap flavor will be similar. So you're not saying that the flavor will be the similar. Konika, pistar konika. You're not sure. You just assume. You know, you're not saying the kimbap will all taste the same. You're you're not saying it directly. Like it will all taste the same. You're saying, no. I assume. I mean, it it should, right? Kimbap's just gonna taste the same, right? That's the kind of nuanced difference that you get. You know, you're just saying, I'm not saying it will taste the same. You're just saying, I'm assuming. I'm pretty sure. I think it will be. I, in fact, I think it's so much, I think it's so strongly that I'm just assuming it. Well, you know, kimbap flavor, it's all going to taste the same, right? You know, this kind of feeling, this kind of, um, what I say, this kind of emotion from the sentence I just said is what you get with tenika. Like, you know, kimbap, it's all going to taste the same, right? So I don't think we really have to go there. This is much, this is very different than just saying the kimbap, the kimbap will all taste the same. It's different than just saying it will. You're saying you know, it's all just going to taste the same, right? It's kind of like that. It's, you know, I'm assuming it's going to all taste the same. And maybe the other person could tell you, no, actually it won't or whatever, whatever reaction they want to give. But that's the meaning that you get from adding this te into the sentence. So you're using future form, but you've got this assumption. I, I really think so. In fact, I'm just assuming it, of course, right? I'm assuming, you know, of course, kimchi's all going to, I mean, kimbap's all going to taste the same. So it's, the difficult part of this form is really understanding that feeling that tenika gives to a sentence instead of just using the regular future form with nika. Are we good? I want to go on to the next sentence. And more sentences, the better, really. And like I said, we got another 20 minutes to do three more sentences. So let's do this one. Ibone. Uh, okay, let's do that. So, 이번에, first of all, is this time. 이번 meaning this time. 제가, I. 살 테니까 comes from 사다, to buy. So I will buy. 다음에, next time. Buy, please. 사주세요 means to please buy. Not buy and then please. 주세요 means to give me, literally. So give me the act of you buying it for me. 사다, meaning to buy. So 사주세요. Please buy next time because I'll buy this time. 이번에 제가 살 테니까 Hey, because I'm going to be buying this time, I assume. So, this is, the reason I'm actually putting this sentence is because I want to let you know that this meaning of an assumption can kind of extend past just this one part of the sentence. So, in English, we might translate this sentence kind of like this. Um, I'll treat this, I'll buy this time and you buy next time. Just like that. Okay, I'll pay this time and you get you get next time. It's like that. So it's assuming that because I'm going to buy it this time, like I'm going to buy it this time, so I'm assuming that, and then you buy it next time. So that's the meaning you get. It's the, it's the same as what we've already been talking about. I just want to give you another example where people, you can ask like a favor of someone. Like you do it this time, I'll do it next time. If you were, however, to only say, 이번에 제가 살 테니까, the person listening will understand what you're going to say. So, hey, I'll get you this time, okay? In English, we might do this differently. In English, we might say something like, well, okay, I'll get you this time. 
right? If you were to say that in English, the person listening knows what you mean, exactly. You didn't say in English, you get next time at all, right? All you said is, well, I'll, I'll take care of it this time. That's what teika can add the feeling of. Like, look, okay, I'm gonna, okay, well, I'll buy it this time. I'm assuming I'm gonna buy it this time, okay? They can get the under, they can get the meaning of this next part without even you saying it in English and in Korean. So before you even have to say tame, like you buy it or whatever, you buy next time or you treat it or you do this, they know what you mean. They know you mean this is some sort of favor. So I'm gonna have to do it next time. So if someone were to tell me, I know what their next thing, the next thing they're gonna say is. They might say, oh, you buy dessert or you treat me for dinner next time, or next time you buy, or anything like that. So it's really easy to tell what they're assuming when they use this form. If, however, they were to just say, I know, I feel like I'm like beating a, like beating a dead horse, or what do they say? Like I've explained this a bunch of times, but I think it's really important to know. 살 거니까, 이번에 제가 살 거니까, they wouldn't get that. Because I will buy it this time, they're gonna think, are you going to say like next time you'll do something else or uh, next time you won't have any money or next time it's going to be difficult? Like they don't know that you're going to be assuming anything. They're just, they figure you're, you're just saying something that will happen. You're not making any assumptions. So if they don't know you're making an assumption about something, they're not going to assume themselves what comes next. So this would just be plain. Like, hey, well, I'm going to buy it this time. So... And then you could ask the next time you buy it, but they wouldn't get that. They wouldn't assume that you're going to say this because there is no, I think I'm going to buy it this time. I'm assuming I'm going to buy it this time. There is no sort of assumption in there unless you use this tenika form. Oh, and if you're wondering, I'm like erasing these too fast. There, all of these examples and a lot more are actually on the uh, outline for today's live stream, which will be up on the Patreon page in about an hour, 30 minutes to an hour after the live stream ends. Okay, let's just check the chat for a moment. Can someone explain the difference between nika and tenika? Oh, that's what we're doing. That's what we've been doing for the past uh, 40 minutes. Uh, Z Catman. Had a good question, completely unrelated to the stream, but I'll answer it anyway. Just asked, does juseo mean? I thought it means to please. I thought it means please, but some places say it means give. Juseo literally only means give. It does not mean please ever. The part that means please is actually the seo ending by itself. This is a polite way of giving a command. No, when you're saying juseo with a verb, sorry, when you're saying juseo with a noun like that object juseo, what you're saying is give me that object, please. Give me it in a nice way, so please. But if you're saying do something like sada to buy, sa chuseo, you're literally saying give me buying. So you buy it for me, please. It's just a way of asking for something. And I think I did a live stream about that already, or did I not yet? Is that one of the voting options for like how to make commands? Anyway, it, I either did it or I haven't done it yet, but it's in the voting options if I haven't done it yet. Okay, next sentence. This is a form that I did in a previous live stream. stream. Comes from oldupta to be dark. Oduo chida. I also I have a video about this also, about chida, if you search chida. And uh, this means to become. So to get or to become dark. Oldupta means to be dark. Oduo chida means to get dark, to become dark. So oduo jir tenika, because, well, I'm assuming it's gonna get dark. It's gonna be getting dark, guys, right? I'm assuming it will be, it's gonna get dark. You know, maybe you walk outside and it's like daylight savings and it's not dark, but you could still say like, oh, I assume it's gonna get dark, right? Um, so outside, on, not, nagayo. I'm not going outside. Let's just break this up. Because it will be dark. Assume, I assume that. And then because, outside, don't go out. So I'm not going to go out outside 
because it's gonna be dark. I'm assuming it will be. Not just 어두 어두워질 거니까 because it will be dark. You know, it will. It will be dark. But what you want to say is, well, I mean, it's gonna be dark, right? So I'm not gonna go out. So sometimes that kind of feeling. I know this isn't really a uh, official way of understanding the form, but this te form kind of can add that meaning of like something, something, something. It will be right. Like you're not asking for their confirmation or anything, but it's kind of this feeling that we do when we speak English, where we're like, well, of course, like you know, of course it's gonna be dark, right? I mean, you're not asking them to say yes or not. You're just kind of saying like, yeah, that's my assumption. So if it helps, kind of think of it like this, like, well, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Dark, right? So I don't want to go outside. I'm not going to go outside, or whatever you want to say. Let's do another. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, here we go. Last one for this form. Naden. Naden, 공부해야. Uh, yeah, I'll just do that. 할 테니까. 내일은 공부해야 할 테니까 오늘 만날까요? 내일은 so, 내일은 is like tomorrow. So, okay, we're going to talk about tomorrow. So I, I said this object, sorry. I said this topic marker here. So now 내일 is what we're talking about. 내일은 공부해야 할 테니까 comes from 공부해야 하다. Have to. So, will have to study because today shall we meet? Or we in natural English we just say do you wanna meet? But literally, shall we meet? So, shall we meet today? Because I'm assuming I'm gonna have to study tomorrow. 내일은 공부해야 할 테니까 오늘 만날까요? So hey, let's talk about tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I'm assuming I have to study. So, should we meet today? That's what this sentence literally means. And you're not just saying like, well, tomorrow I have to study. So should we meet today? You're saying, well, I, you know, I'm gonna have to study tomorrow, right? So. You're kind of like conveying that to the other person. Like I'm. This is not just I will have to study tomorrow. You're not just flat out saying I will have to study tomorrow. You're saying, hey, like just you know, like I'm pretty sure I'm thinking I'm gonna have to study tomorrow. I'm pretty sure I'm assuming it. You know, I gotta study tomorrow, right? So that's where I was kind of putting in that right meaning. Although, it, like I said, don't don't say you heard that from me. This right meaning does not exist at all in Korean. There is no such meaning of right. There's actually a different form you can use when you want to ask someone like right. There's a couple other forms. No, this is just kind of that feeling like you're you're showing them that you're not a hundred percent sure, but that's what you're assuming, which is what an assumption is, right? You're you're thinking something, right? But you're right, <laughs> but you're sure about it. You're sure about it, so you're gonna just assume with it. You're just gonna go with it. So that's why I'm adding this here. But do not write that this form has that meaning literally because it doesn't. It's only kind of like when you're translating it into English that you get this sort of feeling of like. Well, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to be, I'm gonna have to study tomorrow, right? So, that's the kind of meaning that this tenika adds to a sentence. So, 오늘 만날까요? Like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to study tomorrow. So, you want to meet today? It's kind of that's useful way to invite someone to do something. And again, note that it still uses the nika, so it still means because. So, because I assume I will have to study tomorrow, shall we meet today? All right, we are done with part of this. So we are done with tenika for now. We'll come back to it. We're not done with it completely, but we are done with it for now. Next, let's do tende. I just got a donation. Let's check it out. Oh, Verona. Verona. 가르쳐 줘서 고마워요. 빌리 씨의 수업이 진짜 좋아서요. Oh nice. Hey thanks. Nice nice sentence too. Thank you for teaching uh your because because your lessons are very good. Thank you, Verona. I really appreciate it. Or Verona. I guess it would be Verona, not Verona. Verona would be like Veronica or something like that. So it should be Verona. Thank you. And 
She didn't say no dab. <laughs> so I'm free to do whatever I want. So let's do let's do a five dollar dab. That's that's pretty big. Five dollar five dollar dabs are pretty big. Thank you. So let's get back to the lesson. All right, we are doing good on time, fortunately. So let me just check the chat for a moment, see if I got any other questions. If not, I'll keep going. And we'll come back to tenika, but I want to first do tende as well. Let's see. Ladder implies assumption. That's right. Uh, Elio, that's right. The first, the tenika implies assumption. Like you're really thinking about it. Whereas just like hanika or whatever is just because. And same with the future tense, harkonika. Since tenika is also future tense, just regular harkonika, the regular future tense with nika is just flat. It's just because it will happen. There's no sort of thinking involved. There's no sort of my assumptions meaning in there at all. Those should be called dab breaks. <laughs> Seems that sense, throw away. Yeah, you can translate it as sense, though I wanna caution you about just writing down a translation like that. If you translate, if you write down a translation like I put down right or so or sense or something like that, make sure that that's like a footnote to the actual information about how to use the form and what it means. Because you don't wanna be thinking in your head and just put sense as tenika because you can be wrong a lot of times. There are a lot of ways to misuse the Nika form, which we'll talk about. Let's see. Okay, yeah, and we're gonna talk about that actually next. So uh, I'll talk about how you can misuse it while I'm talking about Tende. So Tende is also a combination of the Te form. Why do I keep writing Te? Okay, it's the Ida form, you know, regular to be after te and then the te form. So if you're wondering, the other one was te plus nika, te nika. This one's te plus ida plus te. So normally the ida form with te becomes inde, right? Like I'm an American inde, but something like that. Well, if you combine te with that, you get tende. So that's all it is. So this is just a combination. You can just think of it as a combination of te and te if you want. It's, it works pretty much identically. So it's a combination of the te form. It's also future tense. So just like nika, it's used for an assumption about the future. However, this is an assumption about the future with te instead of an assumption about the future with nika. So instead of saying because, now you've got this contrast. So blah, 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 tende? And then here's the other part of the sentence. So this can mean and, this can mean but, this can mean so, like therefore or whatever. Not therefore, but you know, so, like I'm gonna do this so, or though is another often good example for the te form, though, however, but it shows contrast between two sentences. Whether that contrast means but or and, it only depends by the on the context. Um, it's not a strong but, so it's not like blah, 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 however, or but on the other hand, it's not like that. It's just kind of like how blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. So, you know, it could be a but, could be an and. So this is the exact same function though. So if you kind of, if you, when you grasp that feeling of something being an assumption, this form is just an extension of that. It's just one more way you can use it. That doesn't mean you can just interchange though with tende and tenika because you couldn't interchange with because and te in the first place. You wouldn't say like, because, um, let me think of an example. Because it will be cold today, um, are you okay? Like, right? That wouldn't make any sense in English. And you couldn't do that in Korean either. because You couldn't use the tenika because it will be cold. Will, be, will it be okay? Because that makes no sense logically. But you could use it with tende. It will be cold today, but, or so, are you okay? Which, fine, which sounds totally fine and okay in, okay in Korean. So keep and be careful for, with that. It's not just like tende and tenika are some magical separate forms that are connected. Actually, think about tende as being more connected with te and tenika as being connected with nika. Don't think about tende and tenika necessarily as being so close to connected or you might accidentally use one or the other when you're not supposed to, when logically it would just make no sense to say because in the first place. So pay attention to that. And we're all done with today's lesson. No, I'm just kidding. 
Okay, so let's do some examples with how I use Tende because it does work differently. The first example we're going to do is one actually that we just did. Nairen. Kongu heya har Tende. Sometimes you can interchange them. Sometimes you can use both of them. I mean, logically and grammatically, it'll, it'll sound okay. But that's only when it logically would make sense to use both of them. So here's an example of that. So tomorrow, So I have to study. So tomorrow, let's talk about tomorrow. So now we're talking about tomorrow with the object marker here. Sorry, topic marker here. Kongbu study have to, so will, tende, but, or and, today, shall we meet? So, shall, what is it? So, shall we meet today? It's not shall we meet today because I have to study tomorrow. It's just saying, remember the day form. Tomorrow, let's talk about tomorrow. I assume I assume I'm gonna to have to I, I'm gonna to have to study tomorrow. Should we meet today? That's what this is. It's not because I have to study tomorrow. Shall we meet today? It's no, no. Yeah, today I have to meet tomorrow. So remember, this two hand thing is what the, what the Tay form does. Kind of like you're bringing one thing. Like, hey, let's look at this. Look at this first. Okay, now I'm gonna bring something else into the picture. Now look at this. See, look at these two things. That's what te does. So it contrasts two sentences. Now the translation can be and. Tomorrow I have to study and should we meet today? But you know, that might not sound too natural in that situation. So in that case, try but. Well, tomorrow I have to meet. Tomorrow I, I assume I have to study tomorrow. So, uh, but should we meet today? But works. How about so? Uh, I assume I have to study tomorrow. So should we meet today? Yeah, so works though. I assume I have to study tomorrow, though, should we meet today? Yeah, though works as well. So in, in that situation, and wouldn't really sound natural in English, but it doesn't matter what you translate it to. That's the meaning of it. That's the feeling like, hey, I'm going to show you one thing right here, but there's something else coming up. There's something else here. I just haven't shown it to you yet. Here it is. Look at these two sentences. That's what it does. So tomorrow, well, I, I, I got to study tomorrow, um, but should we meet today? Should, should we hang out today instead, right? Because I got to meet tomorrow. So that's exactly what it does. And it's just like the tenika form. It shows an assumption. So I'm assuming, yeah, I'm pretty sure I got to study tomorrow, right? Uh, should we meet today? So that's what the sentences do. I mean, sorry, this, that's what this form tende does. And after you've already learned tenika, tende should seem a bit, a, a bit simpler, right? Because it's the same exact form just used as the te form, which if you're familiar with the Nika form and the Te form separately, you'll see that it's quite different how you use it. So I wanted to first give you an example of how they can both be used in the same sentence because sometimes either saying because or saying like but can both work in a sentence, right? But not all the time. As I'd given you a previous example before, let's go over that example. Uh, let's say, yeah, let's do that. It's going to be very cold. Okay, so. Mani chupta. So chup chu. Sorry, not sure. So chupta again, when it conjugates before grammar, it'll often become chu. -u. That's not just with this, but any descriptive verb that ends in this, you'll remove this letter and then you'll add u. You don't have to do some special rules with every type of verb though. This one is the most common one you have to worry about. So, chupta. And it's only for descriptive verbs. It's not for action verbs, only for when you're describing something. So like cold, hot, beautiful. There's a lot of them like that. Anyway, so older, mani, chur. Another verb though, like hada, would just become hai, and mokta would just become mogul. So you don't have to like do special rules to regular verbs. It's only just this one is. So I apologize for giving you kind of a tricky one for this simple example. So, mani chur tende. So, what do you think we could put after this sentence? What do you think we could put after saying this? Mani chur tende. 
It's going to be very cold, I assume. You know, today's going to be really cold. Are you going to be okay? Ken? Chan? Kessoyo? 오늘 많이 추울 텐데. 많이, a lot. 추울 텐데. It will be cold, I assume. 괜찮겠어요? Are you going to be okay? Will you be okay? Hey, are you going to be okay? It's going to be really cold today. It's going to be really cold today. I'm assuming it's, it's going to be cold today, right? Are you going to be okay? That's what this means. And you can probably think of thousands of other things you could put here instead of just asking, are you going to be okay? Like, what would, what would you reply to if, some, if you were to start a sentence by saying, if you were to start a sentence by saying, 많이 추울 텐데, in English, oh, it's going to be really cold today, right? So how would you finish that sentence? That's how you can finish it in Korean. Can you Are you going to be okay? Um, did you bring your coat? You know, do you have an umbrella if it's going to rain or whatever you want to say? Let me just check the chat for a minute. I usually see these, so Skit42 wrote, I usually see these sentences translating into two sentences in English. That's fine to do. You can translate it. That's the thing with Korean is that people, each person might have a different way of translating it. And there's no real right or wrong answer as long as it logically is the same meaning as the original sentence. 10 day is more polite than 10 ika, Tiffany wrote, because the latter makes you look sure of your assumption. Um, no, it's, that's not true. Um, however, 10, 10 day actually is slightly more popular, than, uh, polite than 10 ika, but for a different reason. That's because 10 ika is the nika form. And the nika form, if you remember from the nika lesson, nika form is not formal. But we'll talk about that in a bit. So that's the only reason that 10 day is slightly more polite. My last two brain cells died. <laughs> No, no. As far as Tiffany K-pop, though, uh, they're both the exact same assumption form, though. Let's just read the chat for a second. How will the meaning change if you use the regular unde? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's do that. Verona. Verona, so Verona asked, what would this meaning change if we were to just use the regular pay form? And it's the exact same thing as if you use the regular nika form. So, kod, koyo, normally you say chur koyo, it's going to be, it will be cold, right? Well, koyo is just from kod, from thing which gets shortened to ko. And if we were to attach the regular te form, it would be with the ida verb, so konde, mani chu konde, is just saying, it will be very cold today. Will you be okay? I, I guess, I mean, grammatically, yeah, it makes sense. But you want if you want to add in that feeling of like, hey, it's gonna be cold today. Like, of course, hey, hello, McFly, McFly. It's gonna be cold today, I'm assuming. I'm thinking it's going to be cold today. You want to say that. If you just want to say it will be very cold today. It's going to be very cold. It will be very cold today. It's very flat. So it's not wrong. It's just flat. And when you're speaking Korean, if you're only trying to be understood by the Korean person, that's, that's like the beginning level. The beginner level is your goal is just to make sense. Like you don't have to sound natural. You don't have to have any emotion. You just want to make sense. And that's what beginners are stuck in. Intermediate level is when you want to start to be able to express yourself a little bit more vividly, with more emotion. So this tende can give you the ability to do that. You can add more emotion to your sentence by either saying, I think it will be, or I assume it will be, with tende, or it might be, or I, I heard it will be, or something like that, adding more into your sentence, more grammar, more emotion, more verb endings, different ways to make your sentence have more life and your, your own character, to put your own personality in your native language into Korean. And if you keep only using very basic flat sentences, there are some times when that's totally fine. But if you want to just say like, hey, it's going to be really cold today, okay? Like you should, are you going to be okay? Like it adds this sort of feeling to your sentence that shows you're not 100% sure, but that's what you're assuming. So that's your assumption. That's what you're thinking. So it's kind of like this, like if someone said, um, like, hey, Billy, like I taught, let me just write this back here. If I were to say, you know, the, the verb for like, for to think. So I think it is funny. I think it is funny. I think it is delicious. If someone to say, hey, Billy, what's the difference between just, between just saying and saying right? Someone could ask me that. I, I think this is a good example. Mashinen go katayo. 
So let's take a look at these, this sentence. I know this isn't what we're learning today. Mashinin go katayo. And just saying, mashisoyo. Right? Mashinin go katayo. Mashisoyo. Someone might ask, so I'm, I, I'm not mocking your question. I'm just trying to compare it with this type of question um, who asked about that. Oh, yeah, Ver Verona. That's right. So Verona asked, kind of like, what, why can't I just use the other form? It seems like. So you could also just say, mashisoyo, it tastes good. Or you can say, mashin go hatayo, I think it tastes good. Well, what if you were to ask, well, what's the difference? Can't I just use this? What's the difference between this and this? Well, logically, you can say either one. If you're eating food, you can say, oh, it's good, mashisoyo. Or if you're eating food, oh, mashin go hatayo, I think it's good. Do you want to say, it is good? Flat, it is good. Or do you want to say, I think it's good? And there's no real right or wrong answer, but you need both of those tools, right? There are some situations where your friend might ask, hey, how was the food there? You can say, oh, mashisoyo, it's good. Or maybe you don't want to say just, it's good. Maybe you just say, oh, mashisoyo, like, oh, I think it's good, right? There are some situations or contexts when your personality wants to say something a certain way. Do you want to say just flat, it is good? Or do you want to say, I think that it's good? What if your friend says, hey, does this dress make me look fat? Of course, the answer is no, but what if you want to say, oh, I think it makes you look beautiful, or I think it makes you look skinny. Do you want to just say, it makes you look skinny? No, they probably won't even believe you. You would want to say, I think it makes you look skinny. At least, if they, at least they can't say you're wrong for thinking that. They can't say your thought is wrong anyway. So it's kind of like that. Depending on the situation, you will want to use a flat out sentence or I think sentence. And same with this form. Depending on how you're talking, depending on what you want to sound like, there will be times when you want to just say something flat out, like, it will be very cold today. Are you okay? But no, a lot of times you want to add in that sort of like, hey, well, I'm pretty sure it's going to be cold today. I'm assuming it's going to be cold today. So it's just a feeling difference. How do you want to sound in Korean? And a lot of times this tende or tenika will sound a lot more natural than a flat version. Doesn't mean that it's always correct and it should always be used. But whenever you want to add that feeling of like, I'm, I'm assuming that, I think that a lot, use this form. Okay, hopefully that clears it up a little bit. So, mani true tende. It's going to be very cold, I'm assuming. Oh, it's going to be really cold, right? Kenchanke, sorry, are you going to be okay? So that's kind of the feeling it gives. But I, I hope you don't mind me going into a bit of extra detail on that because I actually worry, uh, like, 13 years ago, so I've been studying Korean almost, this will be my 14th year. 13 years ago or even 12 years ago, like I was in the same boat as a lot of you. And I would hear something like tende, tenika, and I would be like, how is that just different than saying konika or konde or whatever? Like, cause I, you know, I'd heard those forms too. And there's, it's really just how well do you want to express yourself? And at that time I didn't quite get it. I was like, well, they both seem to mean like future tense and I don't need to say an assumption and it still makes my point clear. And yeah, and the thing is just how much, how, how much do you want to express yourself? So I'm kind of, I was kind of explaining it more in depth because I was thinking, well, what if I had asked that question? What would I want to hear? And I think that's what I would probably want to hear if I had asked that question 13 years ago. So let me check here. Okay. Yeah, but like they're mostly interchangeable. No, they're not. Could you interchange, I think it tastes good with, it is good? No. Um, some situations, sure. If you're eating food and they ask, how does it taste? You could say it tastes good or I think it tastes good. But other times, no. Like, what did you think about the food? Like, or the example, other example I gave, you might want to say, I think something instead of just saying it is a certain way. Like if your friend is being rude, do you want to tell your friend, you are mean? Or do you want to say, I think what you did might not have been appropriate, right? I mean, do you want to communicate like a caveman? Like, good, bad. George, go, tree, you know, or do you want to say, do you want to com communicate more naturally, more sophisticated? And that's what you need. You need to have these tools, whether you use them or not, you need to know these tools so that you can speak more naturally and more with more emotion. Um, because yeah, the, the flat way might not always be the best way, or maybe it is. Maybe you do want to speak the flat way. It's completely up to you, but you should at least have these tools available to you, whether you use them or not. My Korean teacher will be so impressed with my sentences this week. Oh, I hope so. That'd be great. Just Bridges. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I just want to make it clear because I think if I were a lot of you guys, some of you, I would be very confused to hear this lesson because to me, it would seem like, 
oh, I can just use konikai or I can just konde or just use the regular forms all the time and I don't have to worry about it. And, and, and if you're a beginner, then yes, you are correct. You do not have to worry about it yet. But then when you get more intermediate, you'll start to want to really express yourself. You'll be frustrated. Like I can say most of what I want to say, but I can't say it in the way that I want to say it. Then you'll come back to this lesson and you'll be like, aha, I see. Billy was telling me like this form is like that. And I can, now I can add more expression to my Korean. That's all it is. It's not telling you guys like, well, if you use these, if you don't use this form, your Korean will be wrong. It's like, no, if you don't use this form, your Korean might not sound very natural. That's what it is. doesn't mean your Korean will be grammatically wrong. It just means your Korean might not be very natural in, in a situation where you should have used one of these forms. Okay, um, let's go on. Chalsuga Sukjeder Imi Hesser Tende Let's do Okay, let's do that. Chalsuga Sukjeder Imi Hesser Tende. So Chalsu Sukje is homework. Imi is already. And now we have the past tense. Not hada, not hal tendeo, but hesir tendeo. Remember with these two letters, just like with tenika, you attach e and then tende or e tenika to use the past tense. So did. So I assume, well, I assume Chersu already did the homework. I mean, he already did the homework, right? Maybe you found out, um, your friend Charsu is um, really busy today. Like maybe you meet your friend, you meet your friend Susie and Susie's like, hey, I tried to meet Charsu today, but he said he's so busy. And you wait, you're like, what? Wait a minute, what? Charsu ga sukjeru imi hesser tende? What? I'm assuming, I thought, I'm thinking, Charsu already did. I'm assuming that he did the homework. If you want to think of it more, let's let's make this even simpler, just to forget about everything else. Hesser tende, I assume that, or I assume already, I assume he did it. So hesser tende. If you were to say hai tende, that means he will, future tense. Now it's he did, past tense. So you can also see this used with past tense as well. So I assume, now like he already did the homework. I thought, right? And then the, maybe Susie will say, oh, I don't know. I guess he didn't do it. I guess he lied or whatever else you want to say. You could have also said, so it's just a little contrasting. He, this does not mean I assume. It just means he would have already done the homework. Like, no, he would have already done the homework. I'm not assuming it. Just he did. He would have right now. So that's the meaning. Are you just want to, do you just want to say flat out he didn't do it? Or you want to say, oh, I thought he did. Like, I assume he did, right? So that's the difference. Because there also is a konde form for that. Uh, let's go back to our other example. So, chu tende. Oops, I just wrote that twice. Chu tende. And then I wrote my chu tende. Kenchanke um, soyo. I have a question for you guys. Oops, what am I doing? I can't talk while I can't talk English while I'm writing in Korean. So I have a question for you guys. Yes or no? Can I change this in the sentence to be tenika? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Can I say mani chur tenika? Can Can I say that or no? And why? What do you think? While you guys are guessing that, I'm going to look at the chat and see what you guys are writing. Let's see. You 
can't use tenikan command when you talk about what someone else will do. Well, you can't just say do a command because it would be like, I assume that Charsu will do that, so go to the store. Or like, it would have to logically make sense. It would have to be a sentence where that would logically make sense. And that's actually what I'm giving you an example of kind of right now is an example of would it logically make sense? Okay, so most of you are saying no, but why? Why is it no? It's not because it's a command or a suggestion. That's not the reason why. There, it's not, it's not quite that simple. It's not like tenika can be used with command and tende can't be used. With, it's not that. It's actually just a logical reason. Um, yeah, okay. So most of you are saying no. Some of you are saying yes. Um, the answer is no. It will be awkward. There, let's take a look at why. So, mani true tende very cold, but let's just say but. You know, it's not but, but let's just say but to make things simple for our translation here. Because, and that's but, are, well, actually not are you okay, will you be okay? So, I assume it will be very cold, but will you be okay? It's perfectly fine, as we um, learned already. But if you were to say, because I assume it will be very cold, will you be okay? Logically doesn't make any sense. You're saying, because I think it's going to be cold, will you be okay? Like, are you okay because I am thinking that it will be cold? It doesn't really make logical sense in Korean or in English. Because it's going to be cold, I assume, are you going to be okay? You know, I think it's, it's going to be, because it's going to be cold, will you be okay? Like, if her being okay was related to it being cold, I guess, but it seems awkward. More natural is like, hey, it's going to be cold. Are you going to be okay? It makes it sounds totally natural. So you wouldn't be able to use tenika in place of tende. However, most of the time you can use tende in place of tenika and it'll sound okay. So reverse, if you had a sentence with tenika, oftentimes you can replace the tenika, I mean, you know, just for fun, you wouldn't really be you wouldn't really need to replace these anyway, but just for fun, you could replace tenika with tende, but not the other way around. Tende sentences can't always replace with tenika, but usually tende works because tende is simply saying, here's one half of the sentence. Often the other half of the sentence can kind of be anything because here's just the first half. So here's the second half, they're, they're contrasted, but it can be anything. However, tenika is showing because of this sentence, here is what's happening. Here is the result because of this sentence. And logically that won't make sense all the time. You might say like, I am cold or because I am cold, do you want to go play? makes no logical sense, right? Oh, I'm very cold today. So do you want to go play? Like, I, I, if maybe if you're, you're like a super human and you're only allowed to go play, you can physically only go play when it's cold, like I guess, but no, it makes no logical sense, right? But you could say, oh, today is very cold, but do you want to go play? Right? It's okay. It, it can match. So 10 days, more versatile than tenika because it has that usage of just contrasting two sentences, whereas tenika has to be because. Because it's cold today. Are you okay? Like, I, I, I guess. It sounds a bit awkward, right? They wouldn't, a Korean listening isn't gonna think like, that's wrong, that's terrible. They're just gonna think like, something feels awkward about that sentence and I can't really put my finger on why. Because it's like, hey, it's gonna, because it's gonna be cold today, are you gonna be okay? Like, because you are cold, because it is cold today, are you okay? It's like, I, I guess so. Um, so there will be times when it's really clear, like, oh, no way I could use because, and other times when it might not be as clear, like with this example, but just think of it, tenika is a really actually because, because of this. So that's why because of this, don't worry. Because of this, it's okay. It's, that's why the tenika form, as I mentioned, is often used for like reassuring someone. Because of this, don't worry about it. But it's not going to be used for something like, because of this, are you okay? Like, unless that would be a connecting because. Like, unless that would somehow make sense with that. And it might not make sense with that in every situation. So in this case, tende works, tenika would be awkward. Um, either one, if you used it, they would understand what you're trying to say. But it would sound like, I mean, you're using tende, so obviously you've got good Korean, you're sounding natural, but then you use the wrong one, 
and now it makes your sentence sound unnatural again. Okay. Now let's talk about double past tense. You can also use this with double past tense. Like this. Has, with this two letters, so first you get the regular past tense here, then you attach all, which makes it a double past tense. So had done, not just did. So let's give you an example of that. For hada, becomes has soyo, right? Hed. So now we've got the past tense stem. Now we want the double past. Has so. Now we attach uh, and then you can do tenika or tende. So you can say something like chega hesosu tende. Hopefully you can see that down there. Yeah. Chega hesosu tende. Or chega hesu tende. Chega hesu tende is just I assume, I'm assuming I did it. But I'm going to tell you something about this. Um, it could be awkward to say something like tende. So first of all, let's just finish this. tende means like, oh, I would have done it. Like, hey, if you asked me, I would have done it. tende. If you asked me, 네가 물어봤으면, 네가 하라고 했으면, or whatever you want to say. If you had told me, 내가 or tega or whatever, tende. Like, hey, I would have done that. I assume I would have done that if you told me to do it. That's the kind of meaning. But that doesn't mean you can say something like this. So I just want to show you this is, this is something you might see. But it doesn't mean you could say something like this. So while you can say, because I will do it, you know, don't worry. Hey, I'm going to do that, okay? Don't worry about it. You cannot say something like this. I'll show you why. It might not be what you think. So this is just another logical usage of this form. Um, is, it can be awkward because the meaning is, I assume. And this is kind of where the meaning is different than just guess or think. Um, it would really have to depend on the context, but something like would literally mean something like this, and it could be awkward. I'm assuming that I'm going to do it would be like, it would be like saying that, like, I'm assuming that I'm going to do it. Like, are you going to do it? Do you think you're going to do it? Will you do it? No, no, no. I am assuming that I am going to do it. Like, are you, it's kind of like saying, uh, I think that I will, I think that I will do that. Like, are you sure or not? Are you or aren't you? And without any additional context, without any other, some sort of situation or any other verb here or anything like that, this type of usage could be awkward. Cause like, if you're assuming something about yourself, it would be for a specific reason, like, because I'm going to do it. Because I'm, I'm assuming because I'm going to do it, you don't have to worry about it. You're saying just you're assuming something about yourself. And typically when you're doing an assumption, you have to be careful when you're doing it about yourself because you don't need to assume what you're going to do. You assume what happens. You're going to assume what someone else is going to do. You can assume a situation, but you don't typically need to assume yourself because you know what you're going to do or not. You can say, I'm go I want to do that because I will do that. Or I'm going to do that, like that. But typically something like with tende and tega hai tende, you don't need to assume that you're going to be doing something because you know you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. So this, I'm not saying this is completely wrong in every situation. I'm just saying that without any other context, it's likely this is going to be awkward because you're saying like, well, I'm assuming that I'm going to do it. What's the rest of the sentence? Um, I am, I am not sure. It'd be hard to think about something else that would be like, well, I'm assuming that I'm going to do it. So don't bother me about it. I don't know. Like it seems a bit awkward to say you're assuming something about yourself. Usually you just, you know, or I think I'm going to do it, or I will do it, or I want to do it, something like that. So you might want to change this to saying, well, I'm going to do it, or I think I'll do it, but not, oh, I'm assuming that I'm going to do it like that. You, you, you could, however, say this, anything else. Charsu. We'll pull our friend Charsu. Charsu ga hai tende. 
I'm assuming Tersu is going to do it. So when you're using it with yourself, if you want a quick, like a cheat, like a quick cheat for how to use it, you can use Tenika with yourself because it has to be followed by context that would make sense, but not Tendei with yourself because it might not be followed with context that makes sense. It's, it's easier to misuse Tendei with yourself. So if you're saying like, I'm going to do something Tendei or Tenika, you can feel free to use it with Tenika for me, I. The reason is because you have, you're going to put something else there that will logically make sense with because. It has to logically make sense with because of this, you know, I'm gonna, because I'm going to be doing this, blah, blah, blah. So it'll logically make sense. But with Tendei, it's just bringing up half of a sentence. There's a lot of opportunity for error. There's a lot of things that would not make any sense with that. So I would avoid using Tendei with yourself, but feeling free to use Tenika with yourself. So that's a quick, a quick, uh, cheat for that. But of course, that's not the whole answer, but that's a quick way you can kind of get around using this awkwardly is if you're using it for yourself, like I'm assuming I'm going to do something, tenika or tende, be very careful about that. But feel free to use it with tenika because it's very hard to make a mistake using tegahai tenika, something, 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 because logically, as long as it makes sense, like because I will do this, as long as it makes sense, you'll be okay. Whereas tende, it's easy to make something that doesn't make any sense. So you have to be very careful with that. So I would say avoid it. But if it's someone else, charsu, either one will work. You don't have to worry about misusing an assumption for someone else or something else, but it's difficult to, it's easy to misuse an assumption for yourself because you usually don't assume something about yourself. Whereas when you're saying tenika, an assumption about yourself, you're saying, because I'm going to do it, I'm assuming I'm going to do it. So therefore, don't worry about it. And it kind of flows nicely in Korean. Now, this is just kind of a tip for how things sound natural in Korean. Um, but yeah, that would be the cheat I would give you is don't use tende for yourself, but feel free using tenika, tenika for yourself. Let me check the chat for a bit. Yep, tenika is okay. Yeah, that's, that's a quick cheat. Like it's not the full example. That's just a quick cheat to get around it because Actually, using them correctly will require feeling how to use them, how they, how the te form and how the nika form are used in Korean, like how, when do Koreans typically use it. But until you can get that feeling down, at least do that to avoid sounding awkward. Okay. Yeah, Ren F, you could say that. Like, well, I think I'm going to do it. And that's fine. So if you want to say that, if you want to make the assumption, just use the regular, you know, regular future sense. Like I'm going to do it, or I think I will do it, something like that, or I want to do it, or I don't want to do it. But don't use the assumption form about yourself unless you're sure about it, because it's easy to make mistakes. It's easy to have awkward sentences with this form. So let's do another one. Uh, let's see, how are we on time? Oh, great. We're doing great on time. Ishigane. So at this, ta at this time, at this hour, Amudo is nobody, but only when used with a negative. Amudo, nobody. It's you can't say nobody will come. Amudo kalkoyo, amudo olkoyo. No, it has to be used with a negative verb. So you'd say nobody will not come. Nobody will not like that, like that. So this is a negative adverb. Amudo op. So this time it's going to be used with opta to not exist. So amudo opser tendeo. So going back to what I previously said, if you're using tende or tenika with someone else, he or she or whatever, another person or another thing, you're going to be more accurate than if you're using it with yourself. So, ishigane, so this time at nobody, so not, not be, so not exist, will, I assume, and then the teo form just meaning like, well, but, or though, but, uh, but, though, or you see, right? As I explained before, you see, or so, so nobody's going to be there at this time, right? So maybe you're saying like, hey, let's go to a, um, let's go to the party. And the party normally starts at 10 o'clock, but it's, uh, it's seven o'clock and the, it's open, but you know, hey, let's go to the party. And you want to say, ah. Uh, like you're not just saying there will be no one at this time because you don't know that. You don't want to say 
there will be no one at this time because you are not the club owner. You don't know how many people are there. You just want to say, I'm pretty sure. Like, I, dude, there's not going to be anyone there. I'm assuming, right? There's, no, there's not going to be anyone at this time. So we shouldn't go. Let's just stay here. So this is also useful at the end of a sentence, just like te. Just like te, you can kind of soften a sentence. So instead of just saying, there won't be anyone at, the, at this time, you're saying, well, I mean, you know, there's not going to be anyone at this time. So, you know, it's a soft way of explaining something. Just like te is a soft way of explaining something because it has the te form in it. But now we have the future tense with an assumption. So it will be, I assume, well, you know, I assume that this time there's not going to be anyone there. So you have a nice soft way of saying like, hey, 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 but yes, but okay, you see, so no one's going to be there at this time. And then if you wanted to follow it up with another sentence, you could do anything that would contrast with that. Ugh, do you just want to go get pizza instead? Or do you want to wait? Or I don't know, should we do something else? Or let's go later or anything you want to say. But you've got that first sentence in there and it makes it nice and soft. So, like, hey, I'm assuming no one's going to be there at this time. So that's what we got. Okay, next sentence. Okay, let's do this. Let's let's do a longer one that connects instead of just ends with tende. So now, so as for now, so we're talking about now here. Or from now, actually, I should write from now. Uh, too, too much. Oh, I wrote that really bad, like a preschooler. There we go, that's a high schooler. So now we're going to use this as a connector, just like the te form. We're going to use this as a sentence connector. An kanen ge, or an kanen goshi. So we'll just do ke. Ke is just koshi. Nayo. Nayo. Which comes from napta to be preferable or best. It's better. It's better to not go. So literally not going, going, angan goshi, angan got, not going is better. So from now or now, it's too nutta is to be late. And nujotta is how they use to be late is it's used in past tense. So there's two ways to use it. One way is to use a past tense. So past tense literally means it was late or it is late now. So you can kind of think, although this is past tense, don't think of it as, as it was late. It actually is late. Nutta literally means to become late. So they use it in the past tense, like now it is late. It was already, it, it lated. It lated, if that makes any sense. They use it in the past tense, like some other verbs. So this is just regular present tense, pretty much. So it is, or it will be, actually, since it has the future. So will be. So now it's too late. I assume it's going to be too late now. So it's better to not go. We don't have to worry about this next part of the sentence, but I did want to give you an example of a sentence using tende that shows it used as a connector. So we have, uh, now it's, I think now it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late now, I assume. Um, Maybe it's better just to not go. So it's too late and maybe we should not go. Uh, it's too late, but maybe we should not go. Here I think actually and sounds like a better translation than but. It's too late and it's better to not go. Right? And sounds good in my opinion. So uh, yeah, I assume it's going to be too late now. So I don't think we should go. That's what the meaning, that's the meaning that you get. So I assume it will be too late. So or and, it's better to not go. So you can use it just to connect sentences just like before. If we were to not have this part of the sentence at all, you can also convey the same meaning. Like, ah, I'm assuming it's already going to be too late now. Like, hey guys, I assume it's going to be too late now. So maybe you were going to go to your party and first you said, oh, there's not going to be anyone there. It's only seven o'clock. And then you guys wait and now it's 11 or no, it's 1130. And you're like, hey, let's go. Like, oh, it's going to take like two hours to get there. Ah, 
이제는 너무 늦었을 텐데. Oh, now I think it's too late. Now uh, it's too late now, right? So that's the meaning you get. And then you could have followed it with the rest of it. 안 가는 게 나아요. 이제 안 가는 게 나아요. Now it's better to not go. But you didn't have to. You could also just end it like this. Just like you could end a sentence with the te form, the same sort of grammar. It makes it soft. Like, hey, you know, guys, like, you see? You see? Or so. So I think from now it's, it's going to be too late. So that's the meaning that you get. That kind of a something, something, a something, a <laughs> sumptuous. Uh, How would you say that? A sumptuous. Mm, this is a sumptuous. I don't know, you know, assuming, that sort of assuming feeling to your sentence, as well as a soft ending to a sentence. So it makes your sentence soft. Like you see, you know, it's just, uh, I assume it's just going to be too late if we go now. So that's the meaning that you get with the sentence. And then whether you want to follow it up with something or not, if you don't, you can just say tende or if you want to be polite, tendeo. Okay, I think it's going to be too late now. Like, what do you think? Uh, I just assume it's going to be too late. Like, oh, I think it's going to be too, too late though. Uh, we shouldn't go. So you have these two parts of the sentence. I, I understand after this lesson, you might still be a bit confused exactly on where and when to use tende or tenika, and that's okay, really. Um, I think for this lesson, if you, get, if you get a general idea of how it's used for showing assumptions and how an assumption is a different feeling than just saying it will be, then you'll, you've got it, you've got it. And then from there, then on, it's just a bunch of practice by hearing it and then using it a little bit in your conversation. I think you'll be fine if you can just get that. Because really, this is one of those things like the subject marker or the topic marker where you can learn how to use it, but you really need a lot of exposure before it'll feel natural to you. So if you still don't feel it today, it's like that. It's like a topic marker um, lesson where don't beat yourself up. It will take practice to get it, but as long as you get the core of it, as long as you get the core concept, you'll be okay. That means you've got it for today. So I hope most of you guys can get it. Even if you're not perfect at it, though. So let's do another one. So, 미국 사람 means American person. Or just we'll say American. 미국 사람 이... So, 이다 becomes to, to be. Normally, you could just say 미국 사람 이에요. He is an American or I am an American. But now we're going to use it with the 태, with one of our 태 forms. Here's in 텐데. So, 일. So, 이다 becomes 일. 텐데. 텐데요. 미국 사람일 텐데요. Now, this sentence, remember how I gave you the example of saying like 제가 할 텐데요 would be kind of awkward, like I assume that I will do it. The same reason, you can hear this sentence and you can assume yourselves that I'm not talking about myself. Like I'm not going to assume that I'm an American, right? That logically would make no sense. 미국 사람일 텐데요. I think I would be an American. I, it doesn't make any logical sense. No, you're saying I think he is, or future tense can also mean would be, right? It doesn't have to mean will, it means would be also, depending on how you're using it. So, 미국 사람 일 텐데요. 미국 사람 일 텐데요. So, for, let's take this situation. Your friend goes up to you and is like, hey, do you see Mike over there? I think he's from Germany. And you'd be like, what? I heard him speaking English perfectly. 미국 사람 일 텐데요. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm assuming he's an American. I, no, he's an American, right? So that's what the meaning of this sentence is. You could just say, 미국 사람인데요. You could have just said, 미국 사람인데요. But that would be more like, well, he's an American. No, he's an American. That's what it means. Just, he's an American. And that's okay, because you're using the te form, so it's still kind of soft. You're like, well, you know, he's an American. Okay. But if you want to say, no, no, like, I'm assuming he's, a, he's an American. Like, I've heard him speak English or whatever, whatever reason you have. You say, ah, no, I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that guy's an American. So that's how you can use this form to give more emotion, more feeling, more, make your sentences sound more natural than you could with other forms. And of course that depends on what it is that you want to say. If you wanted to talk about yourself, someone says like, hey, Hey, you're from Germany. And you want to be, ah, 저 미국 사람인데요. I'm an American. You're not assuming anything. You're just saying, I am an American. Of course, you have the teo ending, so you're being polite. You know, it's not, I shouldn't say polite. It's soft. 
you're being soft. So you're not just saying, well, no, I'm an American. You're wrong. You're saying, oh, well, <laughs> you see, you see, you see, ah, I'm an American. Ah, I'm a Korean person. Ha ha ha, I'm an American. So you could say this if someone's like, wow, your Korean's so good. I thought you were a Korean. You'll hear that. Even if your Korean's not that good, Koreans will tell you that. It's like a common compliment. So you could say, ah, I'm a Korean person. Oh no, well, you see, I'm an American. Ha ha ha. But you would never want to say, I'm a Korean person. I assume that I'm an, I'm an American. It just makes no sense to assume that you're an American. You are an American. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could say, I think I'm an American, but you would never assume like, oh, I'm pretty sure I'm an American. You would never say anything like that ever. It just sounds really awkward to say, I assume that I'm, I'm an American. So you have to be careful when you're assuming things about yourself. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. That is all the examples for Tenika and Tende, but we're not done with the lesson. Uh, let's see, how are we on time? Oh, we're just, just a little over time. Um, we could use that. Okay, let's do one more example of how they can and can't be used. Nanen. So I, this is just a, let's just do like a textbook style example. So this isn't the most, ex most natural example, but I wanted to do something that's really easy to understand so we can focus on the grammar and not focus on what words or the style are used. So sometimes my sentences that I give you um, might not be the most natural ones, but I'll usually tell you that. And it's because I want you to focus on the grammar and not have to focus on some really natural long sentence, just so you can understand that part. Okay. 나는 학교에서 공부할 테니까 no. Normally you don't want to use no for you, but we're just going to use it here. Say it's your best friend. 같이 갈래? Now the 갈래 form, we did a lesson on this. I also did a lesson on do do. So, if you're intermediate, these should be already be okay. If you don't know these forms, then again, this lesson is above your level. <laughs> it's probably above your pay grade, so don't worry about it. Okay, so you can say something like this. 나는 학교에서 공부할 테니까 학교, school. 에서, at, as in you're doing something at. 나는, I, 너, you, 도, to together want to go oops wang i was trying to have want to go together <laughs> came wang okay um study hi will and then we have because nika because i hope it's helpful if i'm writing these out okay so uh i'm gonna i'm assuming i'm gonna be studying at the school library so I'm gonna, I'm assuming I'm gonna be studying at the school library. So now I remember I said you can use nika with, with I, it's usually okay because it often comes together with context that it will make sense with. Um, so I'm gonna study at school. So because I'm, I'm assuming I'm gonna be studying at school, therefore, because of that, you two, do you wanna come together? So like, hey, I'm gonna be studying at school. At least I'm assuming I'm gonna be studying at school. So do you wanna come together? Do you want to come with me? I'm going to study. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to go study at school. You want to come? That's what you get from this meeting. So it's okay. It's not the most natural sentence because you know, you're using na nin, no do. It's like, I don't know. It's a bit, a little bit, you know, unnecessary, but anyway, it might, in, instead of Korean might just be a na na hakkyo eso gongbu gal gonde. No do gachi galle. Or na hakkyo eso gongbu ral hal gonde. Hal tende. Hal tenika. I guess tenika still sounds pretty natural. I'm trying to think what if there's a more natural way. Anyway, they might just ask it simply, more simply than this. So now let's change it. Now let's try to do this. This would be awkward. So again, Oh, I'm okay. You see, I'm assuming I'm going to be studying at school. Do you want to come together with me? It's a little bit, it's just a bit awkward. You get that sort of awkward feeling when you're assuming something about yourself when it comes with tende that you don't quite get when you're using it with tenika. That tenika kind of fills in the awkwardness with the next part of the sentence that comes. Um, or at least they can assume that's gonna come. Whereas tende more like separates the sentences. So you don't get that kind of feeling of completion that you do with tende and it sounds awkward. So you wouldn't wanna use tende with this sentence but you could use tenika. So because I'm gonna study, 
today at school. You want to go together? Um, however, what you can do is this. So let's do another sentence. Hi. Tenika. Oh, did I write that twice? Okay. If you do want to do tende, uh, let's see. Tende. And I apologize, I know it probably is quite confusing. So, 나는 학교에서 공부를 공부할 텐데. 너는 you what want to do? You can, however, do this. 나는 학교에서 공부할 할 텐데. I'm going to study. I'm assuming I'm going to study at school. What are you going to do? In this case, you can do it. In this case, you can do yourself with tende because you have another sentence that doesn't isn't directly connected but it's it's shown up together so you get 나는 학교에서 공부를 할 텐데 like hey i'm assuming i'm going to be studying at school today which by itself is really weird makes no sense right i mean it's it's awkward i should say it doesn't make no sense it makes sense it's awkward i'm assuming i'm going to be studying at the school today it's like why are you telling me that just say you're going to study or not right so this is what if we just look at this it's awkward 난 학교에서 공부를 할 텐데, 공부할 텐데. I'm assuming, hey, you know, I'm going to study at school today, right? Okay, it sounds really awkward. But if you were to say, followed by, 너는 뭐 할래? So, okay, I'm going to be studying at school, I assume, today. What do you want to do? It sounds okay. Because you've now put in something else that can go with it that fits. So it makes sense now you're saying, I'm guessing I'm just going to do that. What are you going to do? It's kind of like, hey, well, you know, I'm just going to do this. So what are you going to do? And in that case, it kind of sounds okay. But if you're just going to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm assuming I'm going to do this. In English also kind of sounds weird to say, well, I'm assuming, I'm guessing I'm just going to go study today. Like, it's kind of like, are you or are you not going to? Whereas if you're saying, don't bo halle, like, what are you going to do? What do you want to do? Kind of like that. It sounds a little more okay. So this is why I was saying, be careful when you're using tende with yourself. And the easy way is just not to use it with yourself. But not that it's always awkward. Not that you can't use it. It just really depends on the context. However, if you were to say this, um, actually, you could do this. Tenika. Uh, let's see. Actually, I'll do this. I'll do this a little bit later. Let's see, because then I have to do another three more examples to do this one. Okay, let's just stop for there for the contrast. But if you want more contrast, there's actually more contrast in the explanation here in the sheet. But if I were to do that, then I'd have to do the other two more. And I don't want to run over time because we only have 10 more minutes. So we'll stop for that. But I will say that to be quick, avoid using 10 day unless it's really going to logically make sense because you have to make sure that it's going to logically make sense first before you use it. And if it's not okay to just say it as like a statement, then it might not logically make sense to use it by itself. So you want to make sure you're using tenika or tende just same way as you would use nika or the te form. Uh, let's see. Okay, I do want to do one more quick advanced notes though before I go on any further. Yeah, apo apologies. I want to do a little bit more. Well, let me see here. You shouldn't use no when speaking formally. Yeah, you wouldn't want to use no when speaking formally. And I've taught, taught about that before. If you watch my um, live stream about how to say you in Korean, I talk about not using no. And I give I talk about all the different ways you can say you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, some advanced notes now. So we're, we have 10 minutes left. So one more thing to note is that because unika, remember I, when I taught the lesson about how to say because, I also mentioned that unika is not formal. 
So it's not impolite, it's not a rude ending, but you would not use this nika form to say because the regular nika or tenika. Same, go, same, with, same goes with tenika. You wouldn't use these when you wanted to be formal. However, there is a more formal version of it, which I also taught in the lesson, which is just ni. You know? So instead of saying tenika, you can also just say teni. Now, this is a more formal, so you're not going to use it with your friends so much. It's not fancy or anything like that, but it's more formal. It's a more formal way of saying the exact same thing. So if you say hesu ni, hani, like this, this ni is a more formal version of hanika because of, and same with teni. Nega hai tenika, nega hai teni. Although you probably wouldn't say nega with hai teni if it's more formal, you say chega hai teni. So this would be more of like a written form. So you'll see this sometimes in written Korean, um, such as like a essay or something like that, or more formal speech. But just be aware that this also exists as well. So let's talk about a little bit about te. Now this is an advanced note, and that is te originally comes from an older form. Um, you might still see te used in by occasion by like cartoon characters. But anyway, te originally comes from an older form as to. So to, specifically to means like a will, like you're going to do something, um, or a plan to do something. So literally, when you're using this to form, well, you don't have to know this necessarily, the te, it means will, as in I plan to do something, or someone is planning to do something. So if you say te ga hai te ni ka, literally, although not quite the meaning of it, but literally what you're saying is, I will do that, because I will do that. Har tenika, because I will do that. Or har tende, because it will be, or I will do something. Or I will do something but, if it's tende, like that. So this literally means a will or a plan, though you don't need to know that. But there are some other forms you might see using to, like if you're reading older Korean documents, or you might see another te form, te ya, <laughs> it's like an older form. Um, you might see some other forms of it. It's the same thing. It comes from to. Specifically, to plus ida combined to become te. So this e here, you can think of it like this. This went away. This blank consonant went away. And this vowel came over here. <clears throat> te. Now you get te da. So to ida originally. Now when you conjugate this with into the nika form, you get, you remove the ta, right? Nika. Or, te da to become the te form. Tende. So that's how it originally came about. So these came from that form. So this is just an advanced note. You don't need to know that to use the form though. Okay. Uh, next thing I wanted to do is, um, <clears throat> Yes. One, this is a bonus form if I had time. A common way that you'll also see this form used is with if, if situations. So they don't have to norm necessarily say the word if in the example you're giving, but it's often used in a what if kind of situation. In Korean, in English, we call this conditionals. That's the grammatic term for it. A conditional is any sort of if statement, like if this were to happen, right? So in Korean, you can do that with using manyak. Now, manyak is just an adverb by itself. It has no meaning, but it's used together with sentences that have the if form in them. So you would use manyak together with an if form. For example, myon. You know, the myon form, if. I have a lesson about it on my channel. So if you do this, they use if, they use this manyak adverb at the beginning of a sentence to increase the meaning of if, like what if, how about, or if really this were to happen like that, if this were. So that's all it does. It, by itself, it's not really, doesn't really have any meaning, but it's used to emphasize a sentence that already has if. So it's not used by itself. It's only used together with if. Um, so how this is used with this form then, you use this with past tense, some sort of past tense stem, verb stem. Oh, and I should clarify, this is advanced. So if you're an intermediate learner, you can watch it, but it's it's for advanced people. So manyak and then myon, so if, with a past tense verb. Specifically though, you're not just using the regular if state, ifs 
sorry, you're not using the regular if form with this form. It is if, but it's a different if. It's a stronger hypothetical if, which if you're advanced, you'll already know this one. Tamyam. Or I should say plain tense. It's the plain tense past stem or past tense plain stem, however you want to say it. So for an example, that would be hada to do will become hes soyo or whatever you want to do. And then it becomes plain form would be hetta. So you do hetta myon or kada will become kata myon or ida to be. This is a really common one you'll see is iyo normally iyosoyo or yosoyo if it's coming after a consonant here or if it's coming after a vowel consonant vowel so you'd say yosoyo like hanguk saram yosoyo or uh, sagwa yosoyo it was an apple or it was an american then yotta da so yotta yotta myon or iyotta myon katta myon hetta myon so this is a stronger, more hypothetical if statement. Now, if you're wondering like, Billy, what is this form? I've done it before on my channel. There's a video about this hypothetical if. If you search for my channel, you'll find it. Hypothetical if. It's just the plain tense, which I also have videos about. Plain tense plus myon. But the only thing is you use the past tense, plain tense form with myon. So it's like an if it had done, if it was with ida, to be. Like it is, now it was. If he, not if he goes, but if he went, if he had gone, if he did it, instead of if he does it with the plain, with the present tense. So if he did it, past tense. So if he had, or if I had, or if something had happened, then, so now you get this. Okay, so hopefully though, if you're advanced, this should be okay. You should get this. I was just doing this explanation for intermediates who might be watching. So banyak something, something past tense, plain form. Sorry, did I write plain tense? I should have write plain form. Whatever, same thing. Plain form. Okay, sorry, not same thing. Plain form, plain tense would be different. Okay, there is no such thing as a plain tense, so plain form. Manyak, something plain form past stem, done. Then they use this together with tende or tendeyo. What this means is if something that had happened or if something happened, then something else would have happened. So this is really common. Like, uh, let me write the example of this in English. This is what we would say in English, naturally. Would have something, that would be this verb, A, and this would be B. Would have A, sorry, it's actually would have B here. Would have B if A. So would have done this, tendeo, if B had done this. And the problem with this is it's a little bit, a little bit more complicated than this. We have to get a little bit more. This is also past tense. Past tense with tende. So this is our B. So would have something if A had done something or something like that. And this seems like really complicated. Like, wow, that's really like fancy. Like I would have liked you if you had told me, oh, there we go. It's not that hard, is it? In English anyway, it's really common sort of grammar form. So you could say something like this. So now we have this crazy uh, explanation that I'm giving. Let's do an example with that. Let's say um, I would have gone if I had time. I would have gone if I had time. Notice they're both past tense in English too. And in Korean, they're both past tense. So although you're thinking this is like some crazy grammar example, like this rule, there's actually nothing fancy about it. All it is is if someone had done something, if you did something, past tense, then tende. Well, then I assume I would have done this, or I assume this would have happened. If only you did this, right? We say this all the time in English. What if we say, yeah, if I had time, I would have met you. Shigan i, so if shigani itta means to have time, so shigani i sot. Tamyon. So now we have if hypothetical if, and we can you you can do manyak here. So I just won't put it up here. Just it would be here. Manyak shigani sotamyon. Kasel tende or kasel tendeo. And this manyak, it's actually optional, but it's good for emphasizing like this 
if I had time, I would have come. So it has a stronger, more, a stronger if feeling than not using it, but it's not necessary. It just adds emphasis, so it's good. So, 만약 시간이 있었다면 갔을 텐데요. Like, oh, if only I had time, I would have gone. And this is, the, this is the normal way that you say, would have done something if something, which is a very common construction in English. Let's do another example. Hopefully it's okay to erase this. Squeaky, squeaky. Okay, let's say um, I could have grabbed the, let's say, okay, so football player, sorry, not football, base, what's the sport with the ball? <laughs> Basketball. <laughs> you can tell I watch sports all the time, yeah. Uh, let's say if I was taller. Okay, so let's say maniac. Let's say only if, if only maniac. Kiga uh, kosumen. Let's do that. Kiga kot. So kiga kuda literally means to be tall or height is big. Kiga kota normally was big. So kiga kota men. Ke kung that ball. Uh, so that ball, tapda means to grab, to get, to catch the ball, to grab the ball. Taber um, suita would mean can grab the ball. Taber su ita, I can grab it. But no, we're saying I could have bought, I could have grabbed it. Could have, past tense. Taber su isos tendeo. If I was tall, I could have gotten the ball. If only I was tall, I could have gotten that ball. So anyway, I would have been able to, literally, I would have been able to catch the ball if I were tall. So this, con this construction of plain form past tense with if. So if I were is a normal conjugation too. You could say if I were anything, he got caught that man. You don't have to say manya, you know, it's optional. So let's just remove it. He got caught that man, if I were tall, then how would you say this without this form? Well, you try to say, well, if I were tall, tabursu isoyo, I can catch it. If I were tall, I can catch the ball, right? It, the, the tense doesn't match in English and it doesn't match in Korean either. You wanna say, if I were tall, I could catch the ball. So if I were tall, I could, what's I could or I would have, I would have been able to. Well, been able to, so you're gonna need tabursu ita, I can. So what is would have been able to, would have been, Tabursu isosoyo. I was able to. So if I were tall, I was able to catch the ball. We're still not there yet. Tabursu isosu tende. I assume I could have. I assume I was able to, would have been able to. So the tende form is like showing an assumption, like, oh, if only, if only that had happened, I could have done this. So very useful form for that. Um, we could do. Oh yeah, one more quick thing, and then we're out of time. You'll also see, so that's one way you'll see the tende form is used with manyak and for ifs. One more way you might see this, and this is also for advanced people, is that tende is often used for, one thing you'll also see it used for is pointing out some sort of bad idea or pointing out something that you disagree with or like, yeah, to show the, when you're talking to tell the other person like, hey, um, I'm assuming this, right? And because of that, because of its normal usage, you'll hear this form often used with things like bad ideas. So you remember how I said that tenika is, al is often used for like reassuring someone like, you know, take a high tenika or something, something tenika, don't worry or it's okay. This one you'll see often used with saying a bad idea. For example, um, are you sure you want to go outside today? Are you sure you want to meet your friend? Piga or tende? It's going to rain. That's a bad idea. I'm assuming it's, it's gonna rain, right? So it doesn't mean that it's a bad idea necessarily. This meaning is not in here. Just like reassuring someone is not in the meaning of tenika, but because it's used here, like you're telling someone, hey, like I'm assuming it's gonna rain today. It's kind of like used for pointing out someone's bad idea. Like, hey, like think about that again, okay? Pigo or tende, like it's gonna rain. Um, another example, say your friend likes, your friend likes Korean food and he wants to try some Korean food. And, uh, but your friend can't eat spicy food, but he's like, oh, I want to try uh, tteokbokki today or something like that. So, metta to be spicy, so, we, so since it has the b up at the end, meur tende, 
매울 텐데. So mepta to be spicy. So it will be spicy. Like it's gonna be spicy though. You know that's that's gonna be spicy. Are you sure? Like you're. It's a bad idea. 매울 텐데. No, like it's gonna be spicy. 매울 텐데. Like that. You're kind of calling them out on their bad idea. Um, you could also say like, you could maybe you're carrying your backpack to school, and your friend comes up and he's like, Hey, can I carry that for you? And you're like, no, it's okay, it's okay, I'm, I'm good. And he's like, no, 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 really, let me get it for you. You can say, 무겁다 is to be heavy. 무거울 텐데. Like, are you sure? 무거울 텐데? That's going to be heavy. Like, I'm assuming that's going to be really heavy for you. So you should think about that harder. 무거울 텐데? 매울 텐데? 비거울 텐데? So in that way, it's often used to point out bad ideas. But just know that in the original meaning, there's nothing like that. Like it doesn't have a meaning of your idea is bad. It's just frequently used for these type of situations. So I think now I've covered almost everything that I had on my notes. Um, I'll add some more to the outline. So this outline is all available on the internet. It'll be up in about 30 minutes on my Patreon page. Thank you all for coming. We did go a few minutes over. I went eight minutes over. I apologize for that. I will reply to comments for just a few minutes though. And then I'm going to go. My Baron turned off. Crystal 777. Yes, that's because we went from intermediate concept to advanced concept today. Um, and some parts kind of went into advanced in the middle. Like some things like telling you, like the parts where I tell you guys that Tende works and Tenika doesn't work, those parts are actually more in the advanced grammar territory, to be honest. So I wanted to include them in today's lesson, but it's kind of hard to explain them without already understanding the basics of them, which is why they're more of an advanced concept. So if you felt lost by those parts, don't worry about it. It is not an easy to explain concept for myself either, because in order to even explain it, in order to even understand it, you already have to kind of have an understanding of the basics of the particles first, being Nika and the Te form. Then once you're a master of the Nika and the Te form, once you're really good with those, then you can move on and learn why you can't use Tenika here or why you can use Tende here because it logically wouldn't really make much sense. But yeah, thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'm just going to read comments for a couple minutes, like I said, and then we'll take off for today. Uh, and I encourage you to practice with this form. Um, if you're already an intermediate person, if you're already like close to advanced level, I'd encourage you to practice with the manyak form. That's actually a really useful form. If you, if you get good with that, you'll use it all the time. It's really fun. And you'll sound completely natural as long as you're using it the correct way. As long, I mean, by that, I mean, as long as you're using like, you know, the, pa the right past tense uh, grammar form, then you'll sound very good. Would you ever consider a video that teaches vocabulary like adjectives, word with translations? Um, mm, I don't think so because what grammar, what vocabulary level would I do? And I wouldn't be able to do that much in two hours. Like would I do like 20 words or something like that to teach 20 words and then 20 definitions for the words and then sentences, 20 sentences to go one for each word. I don't know. Maybe, I, I guess it's not a bad idea. I just, it would be difficult to kind of come up with which words would be good to teach. In a sentence, someone said, Iriwa. Oh, Abby, Iri means this way. It's a casual way of saying this way. They also have different, it's kind of, it's kind of like saying, Iroke in this way, Ichogoro, this way. Iri is just like, hey, come here, 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 here. It's a, like a cutesy way, not cutesy, it's an informal way of saying this direction, this way, here. Yeah, Tiffany K-pop, perfect. If I had money, I would have gone to Korea. Perfect, perfect. Remembering how, tips on remembering how to use the grammar because I only use the same ones. Yes, uh, Desi Slava, it's because you're not practicing enough and that's it. It means that you're, it might mean that you're an intermediate because that if you're feeling like um, I keep using the same stuff over, I'm not getting better, but you're studying, then that's called the intermediate plateau. Actually, instead of me wasting my time explaining it here, I made a full video about that. Check out my Glass with Billy series. I made a video about the intermediate plateau just a few months ago. I recommend check that out because I explain about it there and how to get out of it and what to do. But basically, you just need a lot more exposure. You need more practice. Understand more beginner, beginner in writing. 
I'm bad at forming my own sentences. Um, you might not, Verona, then you might not be intermediate. I'm not sure. It depends on how you're, you're studying. Um, but intermediate, kind of in that level, like where you might be an intermediate where you're good at making your own sentences. You might be an intermediate where you know a lot, but you're not good at making your own sentences. Um, I would need to know more in order to give you like a tip for what to do about that. Because that would depend on what part of the intermediate level you be. Can shipta go shimnika? Uh, shipta is sumnik is ship sumnika. Yes, but you spelled it you spelled it wrong. It should be ship with this letter. So you'd be ship sumnida or sumnika like that. Since it's it ends in a consonant, it uses sumnida or sumnika. If it ended in a vowel, it would just be nika or nida. You mentioned that tamian is used for past tense, but I've seen itamian in songs and it's the same thing. Yes, itamian is the play is the plain form present tense. If you say itamian, if it is. Itamian. Because ita would just be the pre the plain plain form present tense with myan. That means if there is, which is a normal way. But that grammar form I gave you is used with the past tense plain form. So, isotamyan. If it were, kasertende. Like, oh, if only it were. Just like in English, if I had money. You don't say, if I have money, I would have gone to Korea. I kind of gets a little bit weird. If I have money, I would have gone to Korea. If I have money right now, I would have gone to Korea. No, you would say if I have if I had money, I would have gone to Korea. So past tense, past tense, like that. Will there be a Korean made simple for? Probably not. Uh, instead, I'll do uh, different books. So I might do a workbook two and workbook three in the, in the future. Uh, I'm also working on a different book, which I'll announce later, which is completely different from the Korean made simple series, which should be kind of fun. But it's taking a while to do that. I've been busy lately making videos. Um, doing streaming and preparing all the videos for my to, to go to Korea. That way I'll have enough videos while I'm gone. And just doing that has taken away all of my time. So I haven't had any time to work on any new projects yet, like, a, like my next book. Anyway, so um, if you have any more questions, please check out the Discord chat. Come to the Discord. You can ask questions to me or to anyone there. Thank you for coming. Um, I'll see you guys again next time. Remember the voting is on Tuesday as well. So check out my channel on Tuesday if you want to vote. The people who vote earliest, typically that ends up being the topic is what I see. Is whatever starts winning at the beginning is what ends up winning at the end. Oh, oh, 52 Bunker. I was wondering when you're going to show up, 52 Bunker. Did you break my board again? I think you broke my board. The notification is not turning off. Hold on. I have to, man to manually turn this off. I, ha I had to put a shortcut on my desk, on my uh, phone screen for this because it keeps breaking. <laughs> 52 bunker. Cool lesson. Hold on, let me write this down. Oh, yeah, it's a uh, pound. Um, I'll appreciate it even more in a few months, hopefully, when I'm past beginner. Can you set my default to dab not preferred, please? Dab not, you'll have to remind me, 52 bunker, no dab. You have to remind me, no dab, because, uh, I have a bunch of people telling me like dab or no dab and I can't keep track of all of them <laughs> or some people like have want tiny dabs or stuff like that or large dabs but no I will not dab for you because you asked me not to but thank you I really appreciate it what an ending one day the hunter lesson will yeah one day the hunter lesson will win um oh yes there's only five more lessons that's the last thing I want to say there's only five more lessons before this um season is over and then I'll be gone for about three months or so on the live streams while I'm in Korea. I'll do some live streaming when I'm there, but it's not going to be a weekly class because I'm not going to be bringing this board to Korea and I'm not going to have a place to do streaming from like this, but I might do like some, sometimes if I'm like at a coffee shop with another YouTuber or something, I might do that as a live stream. So thank you again to my donators as well. Ibrahim, Grandpa Mikey, Nanya Business, Carol, Ioni Mode, Conan, Verona, 52 Bunker. See you guys again next week. Kram, Tametoba. Now let's just move this so you guys can enjoy the beautiful view of the Han River.
on, just just bridges. You can't just throw in a donation at the last second and expect me to close my stream. Oh, it's awesome. Just bridges. Thank you for the ten dollar donation. And you also wrote, sorry about. Hold on, I'll write this on the board. Sorry about the BTS llama drama. What was the BTS llama drama? I missed it. You'll have to tell me about it in the Discord because I, I missed what was going on with that. Um, I'll do a one final do, one final dab. Since I've got all this all this room right here, let's do a one final dab. 